Disney is a mastermind when it comes to creating seemingly family-friendly products. Whether it's a film or a cartoon or an amusement park, Disney has convinced the masses that it's simply good, clean fun. But at a closer examination, something more sinister is underneath that innocent persona, a dark force not to be trifled with. You know, Disney has never been shy to showcase occult themes, but it seems that most of the content aimed at the young is becoming blatantly evil. Take, for instance, the movie called Descendants. The logo alone should deter any awake Christian from wasting even a precious moment upon watching this. The plot should even sound the alarm that much more. The next generation of villains arrives. Jay, son of Jafar. What are you doing? It's called stealing. It's like buying whatever I want, except it's free. Evie, daughter of evil queen. Is everybody at home as pretty as you? I like to think I'm the fairest of them all. Beauty is pain. Carlos, son of Cruella de Vil. This thing is a killer. This is a vicious, rabid pack animal. Hey, who told you that? My mother. And now, daughter of Maleficent. They're at their best when doing their worst. This glamorizes being evil and makes it fashionable. In 2014, Disney made this story called Maleficent, a very satanic film that mesmerized many young people in its spell. Well, well. is evil in this world. Hatred and revenge. <laughs> the dictionary defines Maleficent as doing evil or harm or harmfully malicious. Maleficent means destroyers of reputation. You know, the Bible also speaks of a malicious being that seeks to do us harm. In 1 Peter 5 verse 8, it tells us to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. If you consider the comments left on Maleficent's movie trailer's YouTube page, it reveals the effect that it has on its viewers. One commenter, ironically named Christian Alexia, writes this, I usually like the good people in movies, but how can I not like this wonderful villain, which the role is played by Angelina Jolie? The Bible is very clear about sorcery and witchcraft and warns us to have nothing to do with it. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 through 12, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. On this verse alone, Christians have no business watching any of these films that contain the very elements that are an abomination to God. But perhaps you're thinking, I would never let my children watch such a film. I only let my children watch the Disney classics. So let's back up. And let's review some of those Disney classics. The story of Snow White includes witches, magic mirrors, sorcery, and spells. Slave in the magic mirror, come from the farthest space. Through wind and darkness, I summon thee. Speak! Cinderella, even in the opening scene, they tell you that it's an enchanting story about magic. The Bible is clear, no enchanter, no magic. In The Little Mermaid, there's witches, there's spells. In the story of Pocahontas, she consults a familiar tree spirit to guide her. But Grandmother Willow, what is my path? How am I ever going to find it? <laughs> Your mother asked me the very same question. She did? What did you tell her? I told her to listen. All around you are spirits, child. They live in the earth, the water, the sky. If you listen, 
they will guide you. Jasmine is supposed to marry the prince, but instead she falls in love with the thief. This also contains magic and sorcery. Mulan's best friend is a little red dragon who lies to her and speaks to the dead, which is necromancing. The Prince and the Frog is all about voodoo. I got voodoo, I got voodoo, I got things I ain't even tried. And I got friends on the other side. He's got friends on the other side. And of course, Mickey is the sorcerer himself. Now, according to the Disney Wiki, magic is used throughout all of the Disney universe. This article goes on to say, the morality of magic is how it's used. Some use it for good, others for evil. And here are the types of magic that are used in Disney films. Witchcraft, sorcery, voodoo, dragon magic, fairy magic, Disney magic, and these are the known magic users. The Disney universe beholds a number of magic users, mages, sorcerers, witches, wizards, coming in all shapes and sizes. There are some who use magic for good and benevolent purposes, and others for wicked and selfish or fiendish goals, and some that are indifferent to good and evil, and thus use magic for their own reasons regardless of good or evil. Here is a list in which Disney characters use good or evil magic. Now I'm sure that some of you may recognize a few of these names in this list. But once again, the Bible is very clear. We are to have nothing to do with these things, period. In fact, the Bible describes these practices as an abomination to the Lord, meaning that God hates these things. And if God hates them, do you think that we should have any involvement in watching them? You see, the classic cartoons open up the doorway for the darker movies down the road. It makes your heart grow fondly towards anything that Disney puts out. If you still question whether these things are good or bad, we've created a whole documentary called Magic Kingdom that would answer many of your questions. It's available on our website. Magic is sorcery. The Bible is full of examples of why we should have nothing to do with it. For instance, in 2 Chronicles chapter 33, verse 6, King Manasseh is condemned for his many evil practices, including sorcery. And he burned his sons as an offering in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and used fortune-telling and omens and sorcery, and dealt with mediums and necromancers. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. The Apostle Paul also lists sorcery as one of the many sinful practices that mark the lives of unbelievers. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, things like these. I warn you, as I've warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Romans 1, states very clearly, who knowing the judgment of God, they that which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. If we simply enjoy the things that the Bible defines as sin, for example, magic and sorcery, we are worthy of that same judgment by taking pleasure in watching others commit those sins. Well, that pretty much sums up quite a few of Disney's princess movies. It's truly sugarcoating the occult. So let's fast forward to today, and let's talk about Frozen. Most likely, many of you have seen this movie, and if you haven't, I'm sure you've heard the songs because your nieces and nephews have sung every word a thousand times. Remember, the devil is the most subtly created being there ever was. Deception often lies amongst the most seemingly innocent things. Error usually piggybacks off of truth. And despite the obvious reasons not to watch the movie, such as magic and sorcery, the film was praised for its noble qualities. Your actions affect others, the need for self-control, the power of sacrifice, and don't judge a book by its cover. But in all this truth, there lies in dangerous air. When Elsa decides to build her own ice castle, she sings that song, Let It Go. And the lyrics say, No right, no wrong, no rules for me, I'm free. This is a most dangerous philosophy to plant into children's minds. You see, the Ten Commandments are our only guide for right and wrong. Where there is no rules, there is only chaos. In fact, it's not only Disney that promotes this confusion of right and wrong. 
The Despicable Me series is all about making the villain as the hero. The poster for the movie says, when the world needed a hero, they called a villain. When in reality, the world does need a hero, a savior, we need Jesus, but not a cosmic villain or the devil. You see, Hollywood ropes viewers in with these cute, funny little characters. But if you just open your eyes to the real message of the movies, you will see. In the movie, The Minions, their sole mission in life is to follow and find the most evil master that they could find. And they end up at a convention for evil villains called Villicon, which they seek out a supervillain named Scarlet Overkill. You're going to Villicon, aren't you? Villicon! I'm gonna get all my favorite villains to sign my magazine. Scarlet Overkill! If I was a minion, that's who I'd want to work for. <laughs> Welcome to Villain Time, the biggest gathering of criminals anywhere. Any evil talents? Not bad. What about you? Any evil talents? Hello. La 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 la. Eh? That's not evil or a talent. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, the super villain we've all been waiting for, Scarlet Overkill. Doesn't it feel so good to be bad? What amazes me about movies like this is you see those words come out of her mouth. Doesn't it feel so good to be bad? And everybody is cheering. Isaiah 520 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Glorifying evil and making it look appealing is exactly how the devil tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. And now we have cartoons such as Dracula as the protagonist, the main character. You see, there's lots of animations that are coming out that even use biblical language, such as the Book of Life. They're filled with images of death and hell. All the world is made of stories, and all of those stories are right here in the Book of Life. But the greatest story begins on the Day of the Dead. A day when spirits pass between worlds and anything can happen. The greatest story ever told is that of our Savior's birth. You see, when you watch this, it sends mixed messages to any Christian who watches these things. Confusion seems to be the common thread between many of these stories. Most of these examples that have just been shown to you have made the devil the attractive Savior. If you or your children spend countless hours watching these types of animations and cartoons, the chances are that your desire for Christ's righteousness will be tainted. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. By beholding, we become changed. When we watch these things, we take on their characteristics. And from such evil, turn away your eyes from these.